The Atitlan Volcano is one of 37 volcanoes found in Guatemala, and on them are an ecosystem unlike any on Earth, where you can find some of the most incredible reptiles and amphibians on the planet. Look at that! It's not going to be an easy trek to get to the top of this volcano. In fact, it's going to be downright dangerous. Oh, 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 dude, dude, dude. But we are driven by our goal to find one of the rarest vipers in the world. And this Guatemalan adventure starts right here at the base of this volcano and takes us almost all the way to the top. So right now, we're loading up the four-wheel drive vehicles. We are going to drive to about 1,500 meters, and then we hike from there. Hopefully, we are going to see some of the rarest vipers on Earth up there. This adventure is going to rule. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. Okay, we got a fertile ants here. Oh yeah, Look at that, beauty. Buddy. Little fertile ants. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Let's bring them over here. Good job, Curb. Nice. So there is a little creek down below here and we went down there to try to find one of the cantil species that's found here in Guatemala. But as we were walking down there, Kirby shouts snake. Three of us walked right past this guy and this is actually a nocturnal viper here in Guatemala. But to find it out during the day is quite strange. This guy was out cruising and look at this. This is Bothrop's Asper. This is a fair to lance one of the most amazing and one of the most feared snakes throughout Latin America. This guy is only a juvenile, but man, look at those diamond patterns on his back. Just that cryptic coloration that allows him to disappear in plain sight out here. But this is the very first Bothrops that I've seen during the day. And this is such a cool find. All right, so this is our awesome guide, Andres. So we just found a fair to lance in daylight, which is the first one I've ever seen in daylight. Here they are called Barba Maria. It's a yellow beard. And that's because adult females, they develop this super, super nice yellow coloration on the, on the bottom jaw. And this is by far the most feared snake on the region. It's the responsible snake for the most accidents. They're super common. Uh, they don't care if it's jungle, disturbed habitats, plantations, they're there. So people fear them. They are not the aggressive demons people paint them to be. Right. They usually are calm if you don't mess with them but it's an amazing snake and it's always super fun to, to come across one. All right, this little fair to lance has been really good and really patient with us. He was heading that direction and that's exactly where we're gonna let him go. All right, see you later, little buddy. What a cool find. All right, so we are at about 1200 meters up on the side of this volcano. There's a particular species of viper here that I am really looking forward to seeing. There's a target species that I have, we're not going to see that until after dark, but during the day there's one that kind of hangs out just on the side of this road and we're going to walk from here. Hopefully we're going to find it, right? I hope so. Yeah. It was a very bumpy ride, so it hopefully very, it's worth it. It was a very bumpy ride, but at least it massaged our buttocks gently. Oh, I don't know about gently. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this, you can't really tell, but that road goes almost straight up at at least a 75 degree angle and uh what we're looking for is snakes that just sit right on the side of this road here but getting altitude sickness up here is a real thing as a matter of fact you may notice that uh daniel solis is not with us right now because he had to stay back at camp because he did in fact get altitude sickness up here so oh part of a snake yeah it looks like something it doesn't look like it was sliced. Something yeah. ate that. Yeah. yeah. That looks like how Daniel feels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Aww. little dude. Anyway, but as I was saying, altitude sickness is a real thing up here. And it's really hard to catch your breath, and especially when you're hiking up this road like this. And it's probably 100% humidity up here, but it's cool. It's like in the upper 60s, lower 70s out here, but...
You should sing a solo. Like solo, we can't hear you. <laughs> oh man, I think I'm getting altitude sickness. All right, we got a snake over here. So how'd it go? Did it go under the under the pine? Had a brown. It was all brown with black stripes. Mmm. Mmm. Right here, right here. Where? Right here. Oh. Oh. oh, oh nice nice mama. Done. Yeah. Just nice. Snake, right? yeah. yeah. Nice oh, fair to land. Oh, so you <laughs> Litter snake in the leaf litter. Come here. I need a pile of leaves. Look at this. Wow, very cool find. Here, here's your catch. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Your prize. Sweet. Didn't find it, but I caught it. <laughs> Let it be known throughout the land that the guys couldn't catch it. Girl power. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> so it looks almost like a pine wood snake from Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure that it has the same habits, the same. Why is there a spider web in my eyes? The same habits and the same. Food that it's eating out here. Say musk. Say yeah, musk. Say, did it musk mm. nicely? <laughs> no, I don't think so. That is a cool little snake. Oh wow! Look, look at its yellow belly. Oh Ooh. yeah. Yellow and orange. Well, gotta be a male. Look at that. Nice long, long tail. tail yeah. yeah. That's not the first male you've picked up, is it? <laughs> not the first, not the last. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna let him go. We're gonna climb another 500 meters and see if we can finally find this viper, but. That is just cool. We've got a lot more of this volcano to climb before we reach to where we're going. But hey, at least we didn't get skunked and we may still yet find those vipers that we came up here for. I'm feeling optimistic. So one of the snakes that you can find down here in Guatemala is the fair de lance. It's the one snake that everybody wants to come down here to this part of the world to find, but is this a fair de lance? And if it was, why am I holding it like this? Well, this is actually a false fair de lance, and this is the first one I've ever found. And these guys are rear fanged, so they do have a mild venom. I'm not gonna hold him like that anymore. I'm gonna put his first third of his body on the ground so he feels a little bit more secure but I'm just gonna hold him by his tail here and look what he's doing. He's fanning out that hood. He's opening his mouth. He's making himself look as big and mean and formidable as possible because what he thinks I am right now is he thinks I am a predator that has just caught him and about to make a meal out of him. But what he's doing is he's making his head look as big as possible, just like a cobra does. But look at this beautiful snake. Look at those beautiful colorations on him. He really is a fair to lance mimic. And to be honest, I kind of like the golds and the really nice banding on these, but there's something to be said about a real fair to lance. But have a look at how just absolutely beautiful this false fair to lance is. Such a cool find here in Guatemala. Zilla has everything you need for your reptile pets, from caging to lighting and everything in between. To see their entire catalog and find out where you can get Zilla products near you, visit ZillaRules.com. Daniel, what have you found? So this is a basilisk. Yes, indeed it is. One of the many species found in Central America. So look at how green it is for being a brown basilisk. That is really interesting. All right, as I'm filming this, I am being attacked by ants. I am writing a very sternly worded letter to Mikey Bustos after this. So as we're climbing this volcano, I just really wanted to quickly show you this guy. So we all know the red-eyed tree frog. It's one of the most iconic tree frogs in the world. It's on every coffee cup, in every nature-themed gift shop. It's all over the place. We all know what it looks like. But this is one of its cousins. This is a black-eyed tree frog, and it is related to the red-eyed tree frog. It's in the same genus. Where are you going? Hey, come back here. 
Look at this dude. I don't want to touch him and get my ickiness all over him, so I'm just going to touch the leaf. But look at that dude. He has those orange legs and those orange feet and that really cool green background color. The black-eyed tree frog. One of the coolest tree frogs that you're going to find here in Guatemala. So after about an hour and a half drive, we have just gotten to about 1,500 meters up to the volcano. We're about three-fourths up on the top of this volcano. You can really feel the altitude and it kind of makes your head spin a little bit but there's a trail that goes down the mountain a little bit here and that's the trail that we're going to take right now and there's a particular species of viper here that i really want to see up here okay so this is like we are on the edge of the I don't know, like a cliff that goes down. We're not like at the top of the volcano here, but look at this. This is like maybe six, seven inches across, and this is the only place that we can put our feet here. And look at how thick it is in here. And this is what we uh, are going through on this ridge right here. And right there, it just goes all the way down into the nothingness down there. And you can't see where that edge is here. Look at this. This is not okay. This is like a foot length. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was very treacherous. Very treacherous indeed. Could you feel the treachery? Oh, oh, oh dude, dude, dude. Oh, it is treacherous. That was almost the end of Reptile Adventures, right there, folks. All right, if there's any Last of Us fans out here, look at this. This is the fungus that attacks insects and turns them into zombies and gets rained on. That is cordyceps, and that is a fungus that has attacked this insect and literally turned it into a zombie. That is crazy awesome. Okay, so we are going back this way because the trail basically ends right at the end of the... Uh, well, at the end of the cliff, and if we went any further, we really risk falling all the way down. And so, it's kind of dangerous up here, but uh, man, this is one of the coolest places in the world that I've ever had an opportunity to herb. Girl walks in with the itty bitty waist and a round thing and your face, you get strong. But are you filming this? Nope. Oh, nope. good. <laughs> yeah, so keep going. <laughs> what do we call outtakes? Outtakes, right? This is no outtake, my friend. All right, we got something up here. What do we got? Adorb, hey. What a cute little viper. Oh yeah. Look at that beauty. So guys, this is exactly why we came all the way almost to the top of this ancient volcano. This thing hasn't blown in a couple hundred years, so I think we're pretty safe up here. As a matter of fact, this is all primary forest up here. This has never been chopped down and replanted. And that's why we are finding one of my number one species for this area of Guatemala. This is what I was so excited to see. This is the Guatemalan palm viper, and it's a pit viper, and you can see that it has two pits on the side of its head and those pits enable it to read the heat signature of its prey in complete darkness and as a matter of fact those eyes on this pit viper that is primarily nocturnal they have specialized rods and cones in their eyes that actually enable it to see even ultraviolet light at night these are perfect nighttime predators out here. And if you can see, that tail is a little bit different colored than the rest of its body. And the reason why is that's called a caudal lure. So what he'll do is he'll sit on the end of a plant like this, this is a ginger plant, and he'll wiggle that tail and an unsuspecting mouse or a frog will think that's a worm or something to eat, come up and take a bite of that tail. And when he takes a bite of that tail or gets really close to the snake, bam, that snake bites its prey item and gets a meal. Now this is only a small one. This is only a juvenile. These can get up to a meter long or three feet long and they are only found here in Guatemala and a little bit of their range goes into Mexico, which makes this one of the most rare pit vipers to be found in the Americas. They love uh, cloud forests, high elevation cloud forests, but they can go from anywhere from 500 meters 
to around 2,000 meters. And they're really only found on the volcanic... They're very related to the volcanic chain, yes. The volcanic they're, they're, chain, that's what yeah, I'm saying. They're, yeah, they're, they're found like, like in surrounding mountains, but usually if you see their distribution, it follows the volcanoes in Guatemala up to maybe around the surroundings of Antigua and then it goes back to Chiapas in Mexico. Well, you had to bring us almost to the top of a volcano to find one, and we yeah. did, and <laughs> man, I am so excited that we found this snake. Yeah, it's a beautiful snake. It really is. That is awesome. So guys, next week, I'm going to be in Anaheim, California for the Reptile Super Show. That video is coming next week, but after that, we're gonna continue with more videos from here in Guatemala. So hit that subscribe button as always, and when you do, hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.